All right, guys, welcome back on board. So my name is Rafi, and today we're going to talk about some social dilemmas. And on the way, we'll also discuss some variants for the if conditional type 2, which we did last class. Let's see. So we always have great offers for you waiting. Please share this lesson so that more, more students will join us today. Like, comment, so that we can read your comments together and make it just another lively lesson as always. Okay. So there's always a better way for you to learn a new language. And at LRDG, we believe that. Whether you're a newcomer to Canada or a busy professional looking to get ahead, we are here to help you achieve your goals and dreams, just like we help thousands of professionals and countless others to boost their careers and improve their language, to improve their lives through language learning. So our unique personal and interactive method ensures that you have all the support you need around the clock. And that's an idiom, guys, remember. And our team of language training specialists and IT professionals come from diverse cultural backgrounds, which means you get to choose when it's best for you to learn a language at your own pace based off of your own needs. OK, we know firsthand the challenges of learning a new language and especially the stresses of being officially tested in it so we ensured that you pass a 90 percent mark which is nine zero 90 percent mark at every stage of your journey to properly prepare you for the final test that federal exam if you want to access our personalized training or to go further all you have to do is give us a call or visit our website and we'll be more than happy to tell you our offers which for today we are still offering you guys a free placement test when you reach out so please send us an email, visit our website, and we'll pick it up from there. Now, you guys, as you remember from last class, we talked about the if conditionals real quick. We said we have three types of conditionals. Let me just actually set my Instagram to follow you guys as well. So the first one was real or realistic. And for that, we would say if present future. Remember, if, present, future. So if I see you chatting, I will mention your answer to everybody else in the class, which is true, winning. OK, and we talked about level two. Remember, type two, if past, would. So if I found a gold Rolex on the sidewalk, I would send it to the police station. Will I send it? Highly unlikely. If past would is condition number two. That's winning. No. Number two. Okay. So basically today we'll go ahead and expand more. What can I say other than will, would? But first, for those of you beautiful people who joined us, please let me know where you guys are from. Hello, everybody. Hello, Leila, Lucero. Nadia, I see our students are coming back. Welcome on board. Let me see who's with us on the Instagram right there. You guys, right? tell us where you're from. All the love. Bernice, I hope I'm reading your name right. Welcome back. All right. So let's get this party started. You guys remember there's a, there's a song that says one step forward and two steps back. Nobody gets too far like that. So. We begin with if present, present, and then one step forward, if present, future. That's type one. Two steps back. So present becomes past, and future, which is will, becomes would. If past would, and two steps back. If past perfect would, present perfect. We haven't gotten there yet, but that is type three, and it's hypothetical. All right. So let's get this party started real quick here with some social dilemmas, problems with society. I have a game for you to begin this lesson with. I'm going to show you a group of words. Hello, everybody from Montreal. All the love. You guys should be able to tell this. I want you to tell me in the chat which word do you think is different. So we have three words that mean the same thing. I want you guys to tell me. Which one do you think is different? So the first one we have is fair 
ethical, corrupt, and honest. Fair, ethical, corrupt, and honest. And all of these are adjectives, by the way. They describe a noun. They describe a person, somebody. What do you guys think? Which one is the odd one? Let me see. Who's our first to win? Oh, welcome back. So we have a returning student. Layla says it is corrupt. Well, let's see. Drum roll, please. And you got it. Welcome on board. I love it. I love this. All right. Now you've seen what Layla did. I want someone else to go ahead and try to beat her this time and see who will get the most right answers out of this. What about now? Judgmental, critical, accepting, and disapproving. Judgmental, critical, accepting, and disapproving. One more time. We have three that are similar and one that is different. Three that are similar, one that is different, and they're all adjective. Judgmental critical, accepting, and disapproving. Mm -mm, disapproving. What do you guys think? I'm starting to get some answers. Welcome on board, my Facebook friends. I want to see more fire at our Instagram. Nadia says, accepting and you got that right da -da 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 -da. all right beautiful stuff so judgmental we're gonna go ahead and see what they mean judgmental means you judge people you know it's like hmm look at look at this guy why is he walking like that you don't like it you judge him judgmental critical i don't like your work i don't like your attitude I don't like this house. It's not clean enough. The food is not good enough. You are not good enough. Critical. Nothing seems to please them. Critical. Disapproving. Disapproving. Repeat it after me. Disapproving means does not approve. No. No, I don't like it. No. Just no. So all of these are the same. The odd one out is accepting accepting means that's okay i accept it the way it is i accept people the way they are layla says don't judge a book by its cover you'd be surprised you'd be surprised don't judge a book by its cover and many cultures agree what do you mean don't judge the book by its cover don't be criticizing or the people or critical to people without actually knowing them just by the way they look by the way they speak if you don't know them enough don't judge them don't judge a book by its cover and that is an expression i love it oh wow we're on fire today hello everybody i can see some more students joining us off of instagram addy and joshna welcome daniela welcome so i know joshna i know daniela from before welcome you guys our family is here. Addy, I think you're new. So please let us know in the comments below where you're from. You guys who just joined us, I'm going to catch you up on what you missed. We've been signaling the odd word out. Three words are the same. One of them is different. Let's see if you guys can get something over there to be the Facebook group. Instagram, I want to see you firing away. Which one is different here? Traditional. Old-fashioned progressive conventional welcome colombia daniela all the love to latin america i've seen our people there much support much love hopefully one day we'll get to meet here in canada let us know if we can help you anyway check out our website you guys we can definitely reach out and help you get your language ready help you understand what you need to do in order to immigrate and Acquire the right language will explain you both for French and English. So do reach out on our website. All right. Let me see. Anybody got an idea? Which one do you think is the odd one out here? You guys, I'm seeing answers on Facebook again. Where's the love? Okay, you guys. 
Instagram folks, I love you. You know that, but you gotta step your game up. Step your game up. Remember, this one is another idiom which you can use. Step your game up means work harder, make it better, make it stronger. You can do better. Step your game up. All right. I'm sorry, you guys, but this one goes again to Facebook. And Layla back with another answer for progressive. There you go. So traditional means old school. Old fashioned also means old school. Conventional means they play by the old rules. Progressive means they're forward thinking. I love it. Let's see one more. There you go. I have a beautiful comment again from Layla. Follow up, which says progressive thinkers are ahead of our time. Well, aren't they always ahead of us and everybody else? They're a mile away. They're usually the pathfinders. You guys know this word, pathfinder. One word, pathfinder, which means they go ahead of everybody else. They take the risk. Sometimes, actually, more often than not, they do uh, stupid things and they end up bearing the consequences. But as well, when they do find out or stumble upon, find out, stumble upon, phrasal verbs. I hope you guys did your homework. Mm -hmm. All right. When they do stumble upon decent ideas, they pick it up and then they'll be leading the way. Absolutely. I think I'm more towards a balanced person. I'd rather be somewhere in the middle, but I actually understand and accept both sides of the debate. All right, Joy, welcome on board. Oh, Valerie, okay, there you go. If Valerie is in the house, I'm expecting answers from Instagram. Let's see, which one do you guys think is the odd one out here? Open-minded, flexible, narrow-minded, and tolerant open-minded means you're open to new ideas flexible means when things change you can adapt narrow-minded means you see things in a very specific way in a certain perspective and tolerant means you can accept to work with people from different backgrounds tolerant i don't mind Difference is not a big deal to me. Let me see who gets. Okay, you guys, you got to give it up to Layla again with three right answers straight back to back. Narrow minded. Whoa. Whoa. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Good job, you guys. One more. That's a bonus. Easy going, strict, relaxed, and laid back. I'm going to go ahead with the fastest answer. Easy going. And I hope you guys are noting down these words. Easy going, strict, relaxed, laid back. What do you guys think? Easy going, strict, relaxed, laid back. Easy going. It's easy going. Strict is not so easy going. Mm. Relaxed and laid back. Okay, I have Lucera off of Instagram. Finally, Instagram is picking up, you guys. Well done. You actually got it right. That is strict. Easy going. They don't mind. That's okay for them. They just go with the flow. Relaxed. They're chill. They don't mind. They're laid back. Strict means on the dot. No time to kid around. No time to play around. All right. Welcome, Valerie. Strict. You got it. I can see the, the people on Instagram. Now you're making my day. Beautiful. So let's remember our second condition of if past would. When I say if past would, this is what we talked about last class on Thursday. It means what your objective is. What do you actually intend to do or not to do, right? If past would. Now there are variants. I want you to keep your ears open and get your notes ready. If I found a gold watch on the sidewalk, I would take it to the police. We said that on Thursday. I hope you remember, you guys. Welcome on board, Ashley. Please let us know where you guys are from in the comments. And remember to share this lesson so we can bring as many students as possible to benefit. Now, another variant could be if past could. If past could. So this basically just shows the endless possibilities that you can do, right? What can you do? 
if I found a gold watch on the sidewalk, I could take it and leave or sell it, benefit from the money, or I could also could I could also return it to its rightful owners. Right. So you guys keep these things in mind. If past would, what you will do actually. If past could, the options available. It's endless. What, what, what can you do in this situation? And I used conditional number two, not necessarily because I don't want to return it to the police, because but because it is actually highly unlikely. I mean, think about it. How often do you think you'd be walking down the street and then you find a golden Rolex? <laughs> not that often, I hope. All right, let's continue. So if past would, if past could, and finally, if past should. In this case, it's talking about society's wishes. What do people think is the right moral way to act? So I want you guys to write me a sentence with should in the comments below for the same situation. If I found a gold watch on the sidewalk, I should let me know what you guys think we should do in this situation down below. All right, you guys, let's me, let me continue here. And I'm still waiting for your chat answers. Welcome, poor Dana. Welcome, Ashley and Irene. You guys, let's see if you can help us enrich the lesson. Any any ideas? What what are society's wishes if past? should let me see i'll give you one you give me another if i found a gold watch on the sidewalk i should look for its owner and give it to them that's one thing is there anything else that i can do i should let me know in the chat below there are many things ah good job Layla. so actually Layla and i are at the same speed you guys are up against some tough competition i only saw lucero off of instagram beat the facebook crowd today good job you guys i love it instagram people i need more energy from you i know you got it okay so i should find its owner all right this is what the people say or i should send it back to the police or submit it to the police all right let's continue then with our lesson here real quick i want you now now that you know what we need to say and how we say it to use one of the type 2 conditional variants would could or should to tell us what you will do in these situations i'm looking for a complete sentence and let me see if we can move on quickly so the first situation what would you do if you found your English final test in the school bathroom a day before the actual test. I'm looking for if, I'm looking for past, because it's highly unlikely that the teacher will drop their exam. It's very unlikely, probably not going to happen. So let's use if past, and then I'm looking for would, could, or should. Let's see what you guys think. Alamaya, all right, I can see new faces. Welcome on board, you guys. Please let us know in the chat where you guys are from so that I can, I can wish you well and welcome you properly to our lessons. In the meantime, let's take a look at this sentence right here. What would you do if you found your English final test in the school bathroom a day before? What would you do? All right. I'm seeing many new Instagram followers. Please be careful. I also read your chats. I'm looking forward to your answers. Look at this example. Look at this sample. Leila says, if I found the test, if passed, that is correct, I could <laughs> read the answers absolutely yes you could yes you could but she follows up with another one and says i should but i should give it back to the teacher 
without reading the questions. Well, tell you what, between you and I, maybe you get to read the questions. I'm not going to judge you. You can read the questions as long as you don't share it with everybody else. Because we have a saying in English that says, finders keepers. Again, one more time, finders keepers. I found it. I get to keep it. Maybe you give the paper away because you want those answers to come in the exam. But at least you can glance on them. No judging there. <laughs> All right. So welcome on board. Valerie says, I would read the test and try to answer before the exam date. Well, actually, I absolutely 100% wholeheartedly agree with you. I think this is the approach that I would follow myself. OK, let's continue with another situation, you guys. What would you do if a cashier in a shop gave you a $20 bill instead of five? Oh, wow, that must be your lucky day. What if the cashier by mistake gives you a $20 bill instead of a five? What would you do? What could you do? What should you do? Let's see. I'm looking more for coulds and shoulds this time. What could you do? An endless array of possibilities. What could you do? The guy or the gal just gave you an extra 15 bucks. What could you do? Let me see. If I get an extra $15 from the cashier, I should. OK, so what do people expect me to do, in your opinion? What should I do? Let's see. Any answers? OK, we have one. I love it. Oh, my God. You guys are doing my lesson for me today. All right. I love it. So you should give it back. Yeah, you should tell them about it, notify them, and give it back. Extra points for you for using a phrasal verb. Give back. Give it back. Return. I should return it. All right. What could you do, though? What other options could you do? Let me see. I could pretend I didn't see it. You know, I can glance. And glance means throw a quick look. Glance and back. Say, OK, we have 15 extra dollars. Pretend you didn't see anything. Put it in my pocket and leave. I could do that, of course. Now. Oh, welcome back, you guys. Karen is in the house. So we have Valerie and Karen. Layla are on fire today. Karen says, if the cashier gave me 15 extra dollars, well done on the right tense, I would buy more products. So yeah, you know what? This is 50-50, you know? Uh, you give me extra money, and I'll buy some more from you. Well done. Beautiful. So I could slide it in my pocket. I should give it back, but I would buy more products. This way, I benefit and they benefit too from their mistakes. Naomi says, I should tell the cashier that he made a mistake. I agree. That's what people expect you to do. When you say should, it means people expect you to do, and I do agree there. Well done. Welcome on board. Okay, now what? that's what I'm talking about. Be on fire on both sides. You like this exercise? Let's do one more. What would you do if your friend's spouse asked you out on a date? Uh-oh. And spouse here means husband or wife. So both are called spouse, husband or wife. So what would you do if your friend's spouse asked you out on a date? And remember today's theme, you guys, we're talking about social dilemmas, social problems. Hmm. This is actually quite uncomfortable, right? Because you know you're a friend and you know their spouse. And suddenly, now you know that they have a crush on you what would you do Layla says if uh, my friend's spouse asked me out on a date i would slap him slap him to his senses what's wrong with you what's going on upstairs you okay 
slap him back to his senses. <laughs> and if it was a girl, what would you do then? Oh, I think that might be a bit more complicated because there's no right way into this. There's only one way that is correct, and that is out. No more friends, in my humble opinion. I would stop being friends. Okay, we have Sarah in the house. Welcome back. I love seeing your faces, beautiful people. Let's do one more. What would you do if you went to use your friend's bathroom during a dinner party and found his or her 10-year-old son smoking inside? So let me get this straight. You go to your friend's bathroom. You have a dinner party. And you find their kid, 10 years old, smoking inside. What would you do? Let's see. Naomi says, if my friend's husband asked me out on a date, I would snitch on him. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. There you go. There you go. You're still a good friend and you want him to be together and you want to maintain the relationship. Just tell on him and let him worry about that with his spouse. I love it. I love it. Okay, we're getting many answers from before. So let me use this one. Karen says, if my friends... Uh-oh, Karen, remember possessive s the spouse who belongs to my friend we need an apostrophe s there so if my friend's apostrophe s spouse asked me out on a date i shouldn't accept it well karen don't i love the way you think i shouldn't accept it right so society says we shouldn't do it but hey we're people at the end of the day, and we're keeping our options open in this particular case. All right, good luck to you, Karen. As long as you have that added apostrophe S, I'm okay with it. All right, so one more. Let me see here. Where were we? One more time, you guys. What would you do if you went to use your friend's bathroom during a dinner party and found their 10-year-old son smoking inside? Uh-oh, we have another one. Facebook people are ruling today. Layla says, I would inform his parents. I would inform, I would tell his parents. Now, does that mean she she's more likely to do that? Well, since she said, if past would, I would suggest less likely to do so. Because either the situation is improbable or that she would use a different course of action. But good job. I love it. Karen says, if I found him smoking, I should give him an advice. Well, I think that's what I would have done myself, as well as inform his parents. But I mean, he's 10 years old. And, you know, kids from, I think, the age of 7, 8, 9, whenever they become annoying, up until 25, they think they know everything. And they think life, they have enough experience in those 10 years or so to do decisions that might impact them forever, that might change their lives forever until the day they die. And they are so arrogant that your advice may come in the one ear and out the other. Come in the one ear and out the other. And this is another idiom I hope you guys can use. Come in the one ear and out the other means no results. Same thing. It's as, it is as if you never said anything. No right. So let's do one more. This is the last one. What would you do if you found a bag with 175 grand in it? $175,000 in it. What would you do? Now, first of all, my intuition, my common sense is telling me my my first reaction is this might be a setup. This could be a setup. Uh, what's the setup? Setup is when somebody is preparing, um, preparing an ambush for you. Right, so they give you a little treat, a little piece of chocolate or cheese, and then when you get there, they catch you in. Set up. There's something off. Something smells fishy. Another idiom. Something smells fishy. I don't like it. I don't like it. Now, what would I do? Let's see. 
Layla says, I would grab it and run. Good luck. I hope you're a fast runner. I hope there's no GPS tracker in that bag so that you enjoy whatever you want to do with a $175,000. What would you do with it between you and I? Would you mind writing that in the chat? What would you do with this much money anyway? Karen says, if I found a bag with 170, <laughs> very fast, there you go. If I found a bag with $175,000, I'd travel around the world. There you go. First of all, very smart. Again, I can see you have a bright mind here. First of all, you lose the police. If somebody was after you and you're traveling around the world, you lose them. You go to Thailand. From Thailand, you go to to Comoros. Then you go to Easter Island. Then you go up to Bermuda. Then back to Jamaica. You name it. Then off to Morocco. Maybe a few days in 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 Rome or Paris. And you know, just enjoying your life and let them worry about finding you. <laughs> I love it. Good job. And maybe, who knows, maybe you fall in love with a place and you, you decide to settle down. Or maybe you go to the Philippines and decide to spend the rest of your life at the beach with that green mountain behind you. Hey, you do you. You do you is another expression, which means whatever floats your boat. Whatever floats your boat means whatever rubs you the right way. I hope you're writing down those idioms. If you use them in your federal exam, you guys, if you use them in your IELTS exam, if you're preparing planning to come to Canada, they will definitely help you out. So float your boat means whatever, whatever you like, whatever things in life that you enjoy, whatever rubs you right, rubs you right means whatever you enjoy as well. No, right. Mad Mont R is back. Welcome on board. Let's do one more real quick. How do we express opinions? Right now, we're going to go into something that is a bit more serious. So we're going to dive deeper into those social issues. But first, how do I even express opinions to begin with? So I have a few ways I can state my opinion, which means how do I tell people what I think? The way I see it is, and I want you to remember those things because we will be using them in a minute. If you want my honest opinion, I think, as far as I'm concerned, and then you give your opinion. For example, what do you think about having to work four extra hours every day over time? Hmm, it's funny you should ask. In my opinion, it should be totally voluntary to accept extra hours. The way I see it is more money means happier people. So I'm all in. I totally agree. That's how we express opinions. As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, right? The way I see it. Now let's continue with one more. After asking an opinion, always remember to check in with those around you, to check in with those around you. And this is a double phrasal verb, two prepositions to check in with. You can also say check in on someone you like or check in on someone who's been absent. Okay, how do you ask for an opinion? You can say, okay, what are your thoughts on all of this? Guys, repeat after me wherever you are. What are your thoughts on all of this? What are your thoughts on all of this? What do you think about this? How do you feel about this? Why would you say so? <gasps> Why would you do that? So let them explain. So you ask for more opinion. Why do you believe that? Okay. Let me actually remove the banner real quick so that you can get to see the end. And you guys on Facebook can see a different banner. Please visit our website and see what surprises we have there for you. Okay. I hope this is better. So how do you feel about that? Why would you say so? Why would you do that? And why do you believe that? Now, how do you 
agree when someone says something you like how do you express that i agree with you 100 percent absolutely i absolutely agree with you that is exactly how i feel that is exactly how i feel you are absolutely right absolutely right this is how i express agreement you are absolutely right and then how do i express disagreement <laughs> i totally disagree uh it, this is a bit more upfront though i totally disagree it's like you slamming them in their face there's a better more diplomatic way and remember you guys those of you who were with us on thursday we talked about diplomacy and tact you should be diplomatic and you're dealing with people so there's a, another way that is more tactful more considerate which says actually no i'm not sure about that i'm not sure about that I'm not sure so i'm saying i disagree you say i'm not sure about that finally if you want to stop someone for any reason you say sorry to interrupt but and then you say your point or is it okay if i jump in and you guys jump in is a very strong word because it's a phrasal verb can i jump in is it okay if i jump in right okay you guys i hope you took a look at it and now we're gonna jump into something more controversial you guys please again one more time i'm following you with the chat Thank you for those of you who shared the lesson. Thank you for commenting. Um, please, if you have any question, ask me in the chat. Unless you ask me a question, I will assume that everything is clear and continue. All right? So anything you want, anything related to the language, just type it in the chat below. Even if you want to know more about our services, our center, what does LRDG do, write anything you want in the chat and we'll take care of it. Okay. So until you write me a question i will assume you got it and move on let's see some more problems real quick all right i want you to use the information to discuss your opinions express opinion and then you can agree or disagree and you can even ask people to expand more choose any one of the following topics and give me your opinion let me read them real quick men with beards and long hair are ugly to look at okay i guess that somewhat applies to me <laughs> i don't know let's keep going tattoos and body piercings are okay for men now tattoos and body piercings are okay for women Men and women should live together before they are married. Men and women should live together before they are married. I want you guys to choose whichever one of those topics, anyone you choose, and then tell us your opinion using the language that we just mentioned before. You want to see it again? Okay, let me show you again what it was, just a reminder the way i see it is if you want my honest opinion and then you give me your opinion as far as i'm concerned and then you give me your opinion so lucero of of instagram says tattoos and body piercings are okay for everybody no right i'll accept that as long as you give me a full answer so now that you saw how we stress or express an opinion can you change it a little bit and give me a fuller answer so i can clap for you all the way you got it so let me take a look one more time with you guys the way i see it is if you want my honest opinion and as far as i'm concerned so i'll tell you my opinion my honest opinion about one of these issues to give you an example so in my opinion men and women should not live together before they are married 
for many reasons, again, in my opinion, the way I see it is that men and women should not live together before they are married for many reasons, not only religiously or religious related, religion related, but also for um, safety basically because in canada i know you guys most of you are from outside of canada but over here if you guys live together with someone you're not married to after a certain amount of time you are considered to be de facto d as in de space facto as in fact and an o de facto married which means you're assumed to be married even if you didn't so that that entails a lot of risk. I would rather get to know someone well and then marry them before living in together, before moving in together. Please feel free to respond, to agree or disagree, ask for more in the comments. And let's see in the meantime what you guys think over at Instagram. It says, if you want my honest opinion, that's it. If you say, if you want my honest opinion, and then you go tattoos and body piercings are. You don't have to say, is that. If you want my honest opinion, comma, Lucero on Instagram, I'm talking to you. If you want my honest opinion, comma, tattoos and piercings are okay for both men and women. You got it? Good job. Let's see what else. Uh, Naomi says, I disagree that men with beards and long hair look ugly. Full stop. Right? I disagree. You finished your sentence? Full stop. In my opinion, they look better. All right. Now I have a new friend. At least maybe half of it. The beard goes there. Unfortunately, there's no hair right here. But hey, good job on that sentence. Only give me a full stop in the middle, and you got it straight on. Bullseye. Bullseye. You hit it. So you guys, anybody would like to come back, agree, disagree, ask for more details, how can I agree or disagree? Do you remember? I agree with you 100%. So, for example, Naomi, I agree with you 100%. I think so, too. That's exactly how I feel. Let's see. Ah, now we have the heat. I hope you guys can feel the heat, those of you on Facebook. Those of you on Instagram, I'm going to share what's going on over there. So, Karen says, men and women should live together before they get married. And now we're going to get to a heated, somewhat heated debate. The way I, oh, beautiful, I love it. The way I see it, there's no need for a comma here. The way I see it is that you never finish meeting someone. And it, mm, I would, I understand what you're trying to say here, but I would change it slightly. What I would say is the way I see it, no comma, is that you never fully get to know someone. Ha, huh. you see, I think Finnish meeting can come from either French or, or Spanish. They might have such a structure in the language, but in English we say you never fully know someone and it is different to spend some uh, time with someone while living together is a totally different experience. I appreciate your lengthy answer. I know it must have been hard typing it on the keyboard. So thank you for that. Everybody else, please, I hope you benefit from the corrections. So the way I see it is that you never fully get to know someone for real. And it is quite a different experience spending some time living with someone than living in two separate places well believe it or not i actually feel the same way i definitely understand where you're coming from absolutely living together is different than living apart you're seeing the same person every day you're sharing every single thing you're seeing them in various states of mind how they react and all of that good stuff that we like Mm -hmm. I definitely understand. However, now you see, I, I, I'm trying to give you guys an example of how to come to come back in an, in, a, in, a, in an argument, right? However, 
from my perspective, the risk is not worth the reward. Because like you said, getting to know someone is never finished. We keep changing and, you know, people always change in time. They will change. We will also. So we'll never actually get to know each other fully. So when is it a good time to move in or whatnot? I would rather start it officially and then move on. But hey, to each their own. That's another expression, you guys. I hope you're taking notes. You should use those expressions in the one ear, out the other. What floats your boat? Okay, beautiful. Now, we have another one that disagrees with me, which was, I was expecting a lot more heat. You guys are becoming very diplomatic. I appreciate it. I'm not sure I agree with you about men and women getting married before living together. I, I appreciate it. Thank you for being so tactful and diplomatic. Would you mind telling me why in a later, later chat? Why so? Because it's always a good idea, you guys, to tell the reason why. I, I agree, I disagree is good, but then it's better if you say why or why not. Okay. Of course, we, you know in this these lessons here at LDG, we don't spare you any here topic. We talked about crimes. We talked about coming in. Any sensitive topic we can handle properly. All right. Let's continue. One more. So, I want you to use the agree and disagree information on these three situations. Again, so I, it's a new set of situations. Now you know what to expect. I want you to try and answer each other. I'll help you out. Men and women should not be paid the same salary for doing the same job. Hmm. It is okay to lie to protect someone you love. It is okay for two people to kiss in public. All right, one more time, another set of social circumstance. Men and women should not be paid the same salary for doing the same job. It is okay to lie to protect someone you love, and it is okay for two people to kiss in public. You guys think about it. I want you to tell me your opinion like we learned. And you guys, I can see Rondon just joined us. Welcome on board, buddy, on Instagram. Please remember, if you can, on Thursday and next week, on Tuesday, we start almost an hour from now, an hour ago. We start almost an hour ago. So if you join now and Victor as well, please, next week, Tuesday, and this coming Thursday, the day after tomorrow, Try to join one hour early so that you can catch us. We go live every Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And now that is almost 7. All right, you guys. Appreciate it, though. Thank you so much for joining. You will still catch how to express your opinion. And we have Layla actually went back to us and she says, um, let me remind you what she said earlier. First, she said, I'm not sure I agree with you about men and women living together before getting married. And then she followed up with a reason. Look how much stronger now her stand is. Because in my opinion, comma, it doesn't matter. Uh, okay, I'm going to come back to this because you almost had a winning streak until now. We do not say if. Or, you see, if you are married or not. We only say whether you are married or not. Or, if you want to use if, you could say, in my opinion, it doesn't matter if you are married. And stop. No need for or. What matters is whether you love and respect each other or not. I love it. I love it. So it doesn't matter whether you are married or not. What matters is if you love and respect each other. And I and I absolutely agree, a hundred percent. For relationships, we need to have harmony. We need to have mutual goals. We need to have good finances and absolutely love and respect. However, where I differ from you, where I see things differently 
is that if two people live together, even if they don't get married, they are still considered to be married. So why not do it the right way from the beginning? Either way, look how I'm going to wrap this up, guys. You can also do the same. Either way, for now, let's agree to disagree. So this is always a safe way to disarm. If you feel like the conversation was getting heated, you can say, let's agree to disagree. Maybe we should discuss this later. You see? And then you can move on with no feelings being hurt. Thank you, though. I definitely appreciate that input hmm. now let's see here i can see some people being fired up you're welcome victor see you on thursday hopefully fingers crossed i have lucero who says excuse me for interrupting the conversation winning i love it that's exactly the right way to say it but now yeah when you say excuse me but I think that men and women should be paid equally for doing the same job. And I absolutely agree 100%. There's there's nothing to discuss here, in my humble opinion. There's absolutely nothing to discuss here. Men and women should, do, should be paid equally for doing the same job. There you go. Now, Leila says, as far as I'm concerned, I strongly disagree that men and women shouldn't be paid equally. Oh, you guys be careful here. I know we have many, many folks, especially on Instagram from Latin America. You guys have the double negative. Uh, no quiero nada. No, nada. So that is no, no, double negatives. In English, we don't have that. We only have one negative. However, look how Layla worked around this. She said, I strongly disagree which is technically not a negative. She didn't say, I do not agree. She said, I disagree with the fact or with the with the statement that men and women shouldn't be paid equally. So what she's trying to say is, I totally agree that men and women should be paid equally. Winning. Okay, you know what? I'll give you a pass for the past blunder and I will consider you continuing a winning streak today. Our winner is Layla. She answered fast, first, and accurate. Well done. Beautiful. I saw a lot of energy on Facebook. Okay, you guys, check this out. Karen says, I completely disagree with the first statement. We are equal, and it would be very disrespectful if men were paid more than women and vice versa. All right, Karen, now you already know I like the way you think. You just make me feel like I enjoy it more. Hadn't you said, and I want you, Karen, to type in the chat, which which if conditional type am I using with you? Type one, type two, or type three? Hadn't you used and vice versa, I would have been quite upset with you. Which means if you hadn't used your the sentence vice versa i would be quite upset but i mean you know how to handle it all right and then she follows up with saying i agree with you 100 percent. love has no limits or specific places to show it and i think karen was replying to layla all right you guys any questions for me today how was the lesson let us know in the comment did you enjoy it did you feel like you learned something new today one more time, just to remember and recap, for Victor, for Rondo, and anyone else who joined us lately, we have four types of conditionals, which means if, right? We start where we are, if, present, present. And then remember the song, one step forward and two steps back. So we go if, present, future. And then we go back if, past, would and then we go further back if past perfect would present perfect and these are all the three any luck there karen when i said if you hadn't used and vice versa i would be quite upset with you that is conditional type so you got it you got it all right you guys 
appreciate it. Thank you everyone for showing up today. Thank you for making our lesson wonderfully amazing. I hope on Thursday, you guys on Instagram will get to win the, the competition, but this time I'm, I'm afraid it goes to the Facebook crowd. You are lovely. Naomi says, the way I see it is that it's okay to lie to protect someone you love, but I will totally disagree if, if you lie very often. Okay, there you go. There you go. Amazing. I love it. Naomi, I hope to see you in Canada one day. You really have what it takes. Please reach out, see if we can help you come here because you corrected yourself and this is exactly what I wanted to say. All right, you guys. Love it. Thank you so much. Until Thursday, tune in again and I'll see you at 6 Eastern time. Take care. Bye-bye.